Well, Graham, in, in many ways, this India series coming up uh, brings your test career full circle because I suppose you, it's where it all began for you in Chennai uh, four years ago now. I mean, take us back to that match. Uh, can you believe what you've uh, achieved in the time since then? Well, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a crazy two or three years, to be honest, since then. Um, to be honest, when I, when I think to it, think back to Chennai, it's, it seems like such a long time ago. Um, only because when we played in the World Cup there um, a couple of months back, the whole ground's changed so much. I mean, it's almost unrecognisable. Even the changing rooms are swapped over. We ended up in the Indian changing room for some reason. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been a good couple of years and it's, uh, it's a game that I'll always uh, cherish. How much has your career progressed since then? I mean, clearly you've, you've gone on to become one of the best, best bowlers in the world. Could you believe that that was going to be the case going into that match? Uh, no, you, you never believe stuff like that. You, you always hope it goes well. For your first game, you just hope you don't make a fool of yourself, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it, it, it went very well um, in the first innings there. I mean, a lot of people forget that we, we lost that game with India chasing 380, so uh, it's, uh, it's not a, a result I particularly cherish, but um, the fact that I got to, to play in the game and picked up a couple of wickets, um, especially my first over, um, that will always be special. Yeah, two in that first over, so set the tone for, you, for your career in many ways. You're, you're renowned for getting wickets right at the start of the spell. Is that just coincidence or what is it? It, it has to be a coincidence because, um, you know, all I do is run up and try and bomb the best over possible. So. Um, it's, it's happened a lot, a lot of times, people tell me, but um, I'm certainly not practicing black magic or anything like that, I can promise you. It's, uh, it, it, I, I have to put it down to coincidence. Going into this series, though, I mean, England have progressed so much. You are looking to be number one in the world. It's an, it's an open goal of yours, and um, this is a major um, roadblock in the way. I mean, this is, this is one of the biggest series you're going to play in. in, in well, it is. Uh, I mean, India are there by rights at the minute on top of the tree, so... Uh, it's up to us to, to, to continue playing some really good cricket. You know, uh, coming into this summer we were fourth or third, I think, and we were just heading in the right direction. Um, we, we all sat down as a team two or three years ago and, and sort of plotted our way to the top of the world. And, you know, how are we going to get there and, and what we're going to do? And it's fairly simple. We had to win as many Test matches as possible and, and win every series. And so far, we, you know, we, we, we've gone the right way about doing that. And hopefully by the end of this summer. Um, you know, we'll be close, or if not there. One of the big talking points, of course, is India vetoing DRS, and uh, a lot of the suggestion is it's their senior bowl, senior batsman saying we don't actually want this. You seem to be a guy who's picked up uh, a lot of wickets through DRS. Is it all a conspiracy? <laughs> I, I doubt it's a conspiracy. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that you, the Indians have been uh, reluctant to use it since it's come out. So, you know, there, there's traditionalists all, all over the world. I mean, there's a lot of people at Lords who I'm sure are very happy with that. Uh, personally, I think it's, um, it's it's a good bit of technology, and it's it's been proven to work. And I think it gets rid of a few glaring errors um, that were there before. And uh, and you know, it, it's a shame it's not being used for summer for sure. But uh, I just hope it, you know, it, there's not any uh, uh, decisions that change test matches because of it. On a serious note, though, it does seem to have um, brought a finger spin as well uh, as much as any bowling into the. In Prominence. I mean, you know, front foot LBW seem to be something that happened more these days than perhaps before. Yeah. Is that something to do with the well, and Hawkeye? Well, you know, I, I think Hawkeye first and foremost coming in um, uh, gave the umpires a lot more chance to review decisions uh, and see where they would have hit the stumps. Uh, and that coupled with the DRS system has is, is now, I think, made umpires a lot more confident about, you know, what's hitting and what's not. Um, you know, and I think, you know, the standard of umpiring has improved over the last few years because of the DRS system. Um, you see a lot less. Uh, contentious decisions these days and I um, see so, you know that's one good thing I mean because of the level of umpires also uh, risen as well uh, I'm hoping that the DRS loss won't be too great a thing for the summer it'd be a shame if, if any of the tests got spoilt by a few bad decisions but um, you know the majority of umpires these days uh, are exceptional so it should be okay Eight years went by before you got picked again, and funnily enough, the man who didn't pick you is uh, coming over here as coach of India this summer. I mean, it's going to be an interesting reunion going on there. But uh, I mean, what were your your thoughts in those eight years? Did you did you think that was it? Uh, no, I mean, when I first got picked for England, I was nowhere near good enough to play for England. That's the thing. Um, people will remember back to that time. It was uh, Lord McLaurin's report that said yeah, you need to get a lot of young blood in the team, and Lardy Darren. I was one of the lucky few picked on that first tour. Um, on the back of you know a couple of good TV performances um, in one-day games and an under-19 trip, so um, the eight years I spent out of out of international cricket did me no harm whatsoever. So you know I've got to thank thank Duncan Fletcher really because had I played back then I may have ended up playing one or two tests and being forgotten forever. 
nevertheless, he was a man who was renowned for when he made a decision about someone, that was it. And, you know, you were probably the most prominent case of that. Is it some sort of satisfaction to be able to say, look, look what you missed out on? Or, or, or don't you even think of, like, think of it like that? Oh, I don't think. I think if you, if you got bitter like that, um, it'd be a very sad world you lived in. Um, a great fast bowling coach once told me, you don't get bitter, you get better. Otis Gibson. <laughs> but, um, you know, you, you do seem to be a free spirit, in, in, particularly in a sort of the media world we live in. Uh, you know, a lot of what England players, sportsmen in general say, tends to get watered down uh, by whatever means. You seem to have what you, what you want to say, you say it, and don't seem to have any consequences of that. I mean, what is it that, that allows you to, to speak out where well, others don't? I think it's very simple. At the minute, I'm doing quite well on the field, so you have a certain amount of leeway given to you. I mean, I just try and be honest, to be honest. I, um, I've never liked cliches. I've never liked listening. I don't like watching football on TV after the game when the guys get interviewed because you, you know exactly what they're going to say before they say it. And I always think, what's the point of doing an interview if you're just going to uh, um, you know, give them a party line? I love Harry Redknapp because he said that this, um, this summer, uh, this winter, sorry. He said, uh, well, you want me to talk to the press and be honest. And whenever I'm honest, you try and find me. So what's the bloody point? I think that's brilliant. I mean, if you get asked a question, you should answer it honestly. And, you know, if people don't like it, you, you hope your employers <laughs> don't mind it. But if they, you know, I still try and keep it fairly sensible. I don't want to uh, upset anyone who pays my wages because um, then my wife would kill me. But I mean, there's, there's Twitter as well, which obviously you're a, you're one of the one of the great pioneers of Twitter. And people like Alex Ferguson, has, Ferguson have said, I don't understand what on earth's the point of it. You clearly get the point, and it seems to be a great way to to keep in contact with 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 the fans. I mean, is well, that it is. It's um, you know, when it first came out, I didn't really understand what it was all about. I thought it was like a, a very watered down Facebook and, and it'd, be, it'd be dreadful. But um, within two or three months, I realised that this is the best thing since sliced bread. Facebook's out the window, I don't want that anymore. And uh, it, it's just a chance for, you know, yeah, you can show that you're more human than otherwise people would think. You're not just a robot who goes out there and plays cricket. You've got views on things. Um, you know, on a, on, a, on a Tuesday night in mid-November, you're at home watching the same uh, rubbish on TV as guys who follow you and so it's uh, I use it as a chance to just be a bit of a bit of an idiot and get a bit of student humour out and uh, and I really enjoy that I think it's great uh, interaction with fans I don't reply to that many because uh, <laughs> my wife goes mad if I do it at home to be honest but um but yeah I, I just think it's good fun going back to that quest for number one I mean it's not only India coming up you've got uh, Sri Lanka Pakistan away which in many ways the beating subcontinent teams in the subcontinent is possibly the the real key, yeah. key thing for, for a team that's got aspirations to be at the top. Is that something well, you're aware it, of? It's very hard to do because um, you know, their batting tends to be their strongest suit and the wickets over there give nothing to the bowlers. Uh, it's no surprise that a lot of the best batters in the world grow up on those wickets. It's why you hope when you play in England that the pitches will be traditional English pitches because a you know, subcontinental batsman can struggle when it's, if it's hard and it's seaming around. Um, you don't want to play on too many slow feather beds in England because that plays into their hands. So, yeah, it's going to be very tricky this winter. It's, um, you know, as you say, Sri Lanka, uh, Pakistan away, wherever we end up playing them. Um, you're not going to find too many uh, damp, wet green ones like in May in, uh, in England. But going back to being in England, of course, I mean, India coming over here, the powerhouse batting they've got, the likes of Seawag and Tendulkar, who might get his 100th 100. I mean, is that the most formidable lineup you you've, you've can face, do you think? Um, yeah, I think it's a very good batting lineup at the minute. I, I personally think our top six um, rivals them at the minute. Obviously, you've got Tendulkar as the best player we've ever seen, uh, and, and will go down in history as that. Yeah, I, you know, India have got a very good top six, top seven uh, batting lineup. I personally think that, that we've got uh, one that matches them at the minute. Um, you know, Sachin Tendulkar will obviously go down as the greatest player, in, certainly in the modern game. Um, you know, he'll be the one they talk about when you're trying to rival Don Bradman. But uh, you know, when you look at the rest of their lineup uh, and a man for man on paper with ours, we've got some players who are putting in exceptional numbers at the minute. Um, Alistair Cook, Jonathan Trott, um, these are two, you know, the two best batsmen probably at the minute in world cricket. Um, then you've got Kevin Peterson, who, as we all know, can be uh, and probably will be very soon again the best player again. So um, we've got some exceptional talent in our top six and. Um, you know, we, we realise that India are going to be uh, tricky to shift, uh, certainly the top six, seven, but um, hopefully we'll be as equally hard to budge as well. 
and you know it, all things all things seem to add up at the moment you've got you've got wiki keeper matt Pryor who's doing great things tall fast bowlers who who, who seem to rattle the splice and and jimmy who swings it so you, you seem to have all bases covered in a way that England hasn't for a long time. We've got a good team. Like you say, I think we cover most bases, and, and that's very important. Um, we're certainly not going to big ourselves up and say, you know, we're, we're number one in the world, we're, we're going to thrash India or whatever. We realise how big the, uh, the job's going to be this summer. Um, but, you know, I think we're quietly confident that we've got most bases covered, like you say, and, uh, and certainly if conditions favour us, then we're going to be... Um, very, very tricky to beat. And on a personal note, how much longer can can you go on? You're 32 now, is that right? So, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, as a spinner, or oh, John Embury, I remember oh, going I never, on until, until he was 40. Oh, I never make predictions how long I'll play. Um, I'll play till my body decides it doesn't want to go anymore, <laughs> to be honest. Um, that could be two months, that could be uh, five, six years, but um, I don't know. If, I, if I'm still enjoying it and my body still enjoys it, then uh, I'll keep going for as long as I can.